here with Steve Learning Specialist. And uh, Kim has been involved in the day-to-day -day operations of supporting instructors and students in their face-to-face -face blended and online learning activities. So if you have... I just wanted to make two quick notes. Uh, first of all, this presentation is going to be recorded. So if you want to view it later, it will be available and we'll send out information about that. And the people online would prefer if these presenter if there being questions from the audience. Ah, yes, sorry. Actually, uh, Amanda started to do that, but I think we got, a, got <laughs> we got away from it. Um, and uh, just so you know, Kim has a, a, a deep interest in open educational resources for extension, um, products for extension. So if you have any interest in that area, Kim is, Kim is your woman. Um, Kim, good. Good away. <laughs> Hi everybody, thank Hi. you for sticking around for the pizza and maybe my presentation, the really fun part. Tonight I'm going to talk to you about a really cool online tool you might be able to use called Kahoot. So just by a show of hands, how many of you have actually used Kahoot before? Mm -hmm. All right, two people, I think about three if you include me. So for those of you who have used it before, you may learn something new that you didn't actually know Kahoot could do. And for the rest of you, this is going to be really totally awesome and fun. So, Kahoot is a free online quiz tool, like I mentioned, that is accessed just through a web browser. You don't need to download an app, and you don't need to pay for anything. And it's really useful for classrooms because you can create your own quiz content, and you can use it for review for your students and your material. So, the goals for the presentation tonight are Number one, to find out what exactly Kahoot is, which I think oh, I nailed that one on the head. Two, how does it work? And three, how is it going to be useful to you specifically? So a little bit of background information. Kahoot was made by four entrepreneurs in Norway in about 2013, and their idea was to bring social learning back into the classroom. Since then, it has gone worldwide and it has millions of users. So there is tons of quizzes on that website that you can just go and use and see and learn some new things. I'm going to show you a short intro video of a, what Kahoot is. So while you're watching that video, I just want you to think how specifically you can use this in your classroom and what that might look like. It was supposed to play automatically. Mm -hmm. Just go. <laughs> well, that's just here. Play. <laughs> play. Play. Think about it. It's kind of our first language. Well, it's how we learn about ourselves. About our world. About things. It's not until we go to school that learning and play often part ways. And that's not right. Because how we learn is as important as what we actually learn about. So here's where we come in. Kahoot makes it super easy to create, play, and share fun learning games in the end. Whether you're teaching a class of fifth graders, presenting to a crowd of thousands, or just, you know, challenging a few friends, you can create a game about any subject you want. Just play on the main so we create a our community. We are on a mission to make it more awesome. Let's play. Okay, cool. So, from the audience, just getting your opinions, what did you immediately imagine for yourselves? Good tools. Yeah. I already do a trivia thing, so yeah, as part of my, it's always been, it. and I get prizes at the end and stuff like that, and it's fun, and I'm able to bring things that maybe it's not necessarily, it, it kind of gives you a segue into conversation. Mm -hmm. I can see this, though, being, you know, if everybody now, because everybody brings their phones and everything to not have to worry, there's a segment where somebody has to crack it to make sure nobody's cheating. Mm -hmm. Well, this you would know right away, so it, it would be a lot of fun, you know, you can get kind of a little competitive thing happening too. Right, so the comment was that, you know, people could bring their own devices into the classroom and you can kind of put in that element of competition while using trivia to generate discussion in your classes. And Angela online suggested this would be really good for reviews. 
really good for reviews. I'm glad Angela brought that up. Um, if you were present for our workshop in November with Helen Watson, I believe her last name was, she talked to us about formative assessment. And that's the idea that this is for your information assessment. It's not necessarily a test or a quiz for marks. It's something that you can use to inform your own um, instruction, and what part of learning students are getting and what they might need a little bit more review on. This tool is ideal for that because you can use it as a refresher at the beginning of your day. What did we learn last time? Or you can use it for review at the end of class. What were the important things that you want them to take away today? So some of you, I don't know if any of you have thought this while watching that video, but you might have thought, this looks a little juvenile, because it, it well, it kind of was aimed for K-12 in the beginning. So why would you play games with a bunch of adult learners? Well, a lot of really smart people have researched that topic, and they found that extensive research on play with children and adults in anthropology, psychology, and education has indicated that play is an important mediator for learning and socialization throughout life. And those are all the really smart people who have researched it and attest to that statement. You might actually recognize this person's name right here. You've probably also wondered once or twice, how do you say that? <laughs> that is uh, Csikszentmihalyi, and he's the mastermind behind flow theory. If you've never heard of flow theory, it's that idea that you're in the zone and you're intrinsically motivated to complete this one task and you're so focused on it that there's just a burst of creative energy. So if you want, I provided the link here to this article. It's a pretty short read, it's about eight or nine pages, and it's on the idea of play and adult development. So we will make this available to you on our website, I believe, so you can always come back and check this out anytime. And we'll make sure there's a link to it um, in the next newsletter so anyone can go straight through it as well. Excellent. So if you didn't hear that, that article will also be in our next newsletter, which I expect all of you to be checking monthly, just so you know. <laughs> so not to suggest that Kahoot is going to engage flow in all of your students, but to come back full circle, Kahoot does engage your students. It's kind of a baby step to flow because everybody does like to play games once in a while. When they're engaged, they're focused, and when they're focused, they're learning more. It also has that review aspect, which is integral to the learning process. It's kind of like if you took a plate of spaghetti and threw it at the wall, you know, you're learning something for the first time, a lot of that spaghetti is going to go right back on the floor, and all you have is this ugly stain on the wall. So you have to pick up that spaghetti and really smear it in there for it to stick. So that's what review would do. It probably, I could have picked a prettier analogy for that, but that's the idea. Another really good thing about Kahoot is that it's safe for adult learners, and it's really important to kind of, you know, uphold their integrity, because as kids, they get things wrong every day, and they're used to adults telling them, no, that's wrong, it's incorrect, you need to do it again. But when you're an adult, you're a competent individual, and when you, it's kind of really sucks to get things wrong. And so this uh, is a way for them to remain kind of, anonymous amongst their peers, so nobody has to know how well or how poorly they're doing. Um, nope, that was it, that was it. All right, those are my big three ones. So I could talk on and on about this subject forever, but there's more pizza to be had in the night to get on to. So let's move on to how it actually works. And this link will work for me if I talk to a really pretty oh, Google Slides works different than uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, I guess. <laughs> Let's open that hyperlink, please. Oh, I bet you I have, yeah, there's a whole bunch of copies down there. All right, so this is Kahoot.com. So if you just type in Kahoot to your web browser, you will end up here pretty easily. So from here, you want to get right to brass tacks. You want to make your own quiz. So you're going to go to the login page, and if you haven't been here yet before, you're going to go to get my free account. So here you're going to pick, am I a teacher, student, is it, am I using the social year, is it for work? It doesn't affect how Kahoot behaves for you. This is just kind of for their own statistics so they can see who's using it. So you can click on teacher, and you have three options in which to sign on. You can have your own email and password account. Sign in with a Microsoft account or with Google. 
as a people part of the University of Alberta, if you just use your Google account, it will link right to that. So all you have to do is sign into your web browser and you don't have to worry about any other passwords. Just boom, you're in. I already have an account, so I'm going to come back here and sign in with Google. But I didn't stay signed into Google, so I'm going to have to do that all over again. Okay, so you'd be brought to this page where you get to browse quite a few different cahoots that are already out there that are popular. You can do it by subject. But we'll get to that later. You just want to get right down to business and make that new cahoot. So you've got four different types of cahoots you can make. The most typical one you'll see is quiz. That's the multiple choice, A, B, C, D, which one is correct. That's pretty common. This other one you can do is a jumble. And that's the, all right, here's four things, put them in order from least to greatest or newest to oldest, whichever you would prefer. So that one's cool in that your students have to reorganize four items in whichever way that you tell them to. These last two, a discussion, you can have a correct answer for a discussion, but the intent isn't to see how many you got correct, it's to generate, ah, so some people thought this and some people thought this, so let's talk about that. In a survey, you do not have a correct answer. You're just asking a question and seeing which four of the options people chose. Up to four, you can have just two. We're just going to do a quiz, and I'm going to do this really quick. So for title, you would, I don't know, you would pick, uh, this is occupational health and safety, not spelt correctly. Don't judge me. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. Description, you can put hashtags in here too. This is just for students or other users out there to see what is this quiz about and it makes it easier to find in a search engine. You can make this private or you can make it public so other people across the world can access it. You will have your students, would that be then public? No, actually you do not have to make it public for your students to access it. Only if you're gonna if you're gonna use it in the classroom, you can still have it private to you because as soon as you start it up, they're gonna see the code and be able to log into that. Now if you wanted them to do it as homework, if you just have an online only environment, you would make it public so that they could actually go to it. And audience, is it for school, university, business training event, or social? So that is something that you would pick as well in order to get things going. Themes, I actually don't know what other themes are out there. You have to pay for other fancier themes, but I imagine it's kind of the same results in the end. You still have a kahoot. This credit resources part. If you were to add an image from here, so you can upload your own image, or you can go to the Getty Images that's in beta, and you wanted ooh, this one to be on the front of your kahoot, then they will automatically fill in the credit for you. So don't have to worry about doing that yourself. <laughs> All right, so from here then, goo. Oops. Uh, yes. Oh man. You'd think I would have practiced this first or something. <laughs> so, question. You would type in. Uh, what day is it today? Yeah, a good one. <laughs> what day is it today? Uh, Monday. Tuesday, oops, Tuesday, or Friday. And you would, I really wish this one, you, from well, here you can multiple choice, choice then. Yeah, yeah it's multiple, multiple choice. Multiple choice. Yeah. Okay. So from here you would click on the uh, question, right correct, correct answer. Mm -hmm. I really wish it was Friday. <laughs> and it should highlight to green. Is it, is it ready? Yeah. Right. Like, all right, well, there you go. Then you would select the correct answer. From here, you can add more media if you wish, and you would click Next. All right, so time limit you can set to if you only want to give them five seconds, if you want to give them two minutes. Depending on the complexity of the answer, you can adjust that. So that is all about creating a quiz. So we're actually going to try playing one. So uh, if you have your laptop or your phone, all you need to do is open up a web browser and you're going to go to kahoot.it.
Kahoot.it. <coughs> and once you're there, these are some other things that you can do with your Kahoot. Either your students can get together on one device and kind of work as a team, or you can do one-on-one. -on -one. So everybody on their own device doing their own thing. Other game options you have before starting, you can enable an answer screen so people get extra points for doing things quickly and correctly more than once. Uh, name generators, you can turn this on for so students would get random names, they don't have to make up their own. For specific purposes, which you'll see at the end, I would recommend that you tell your students to use their student ID number actually when they're logging in. Tonight you can put in whatever you name you want. Though I am monitoring them, so please keep it like job safe. Okay. So, um, are you wanting us to do something here? Not yes, yet. in just a moment you oh. will get a PIN number, which I will display this PIN throughout so if someone gets stuck along the way they can come and join us after. So in a second a PIN number is going to display here. You're going to put that, uh, you're going to put that into your device, wherever you are. I have a class. This is so interesting. They're just filling out their big decks. I um, came back uh, in two more minutes <laughs> just to get more. But if we want to try this and we get stuck, mm -hmm. if you are a go-to person to help us through or is there someone else? Absolutely I'm your go-to person if you get stuck. Yeah, uh, my email is kmwardrow at uh, ualberta.ca, or you can always email leolearn at ualberta.ca, and I'll get it there. I always have Brian. Brian before. Or just but Brian, yeah. <laughs> Brian, yeah, Brian, Brian's your go-to guy. Forget, Brian, Brian. forget about me. It's all Brian. Okay. <laughs> it's all Brian. It's all Brian. It's all Brian. Yeah, that's how good this is. It's all, it's all Brian all the time. Okay, that's the one that always says the E class. Yeah. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Where are you guys, Frank? Frank? Now, as I mentioned um, very briefly, it, you can say, you know what, Alex, that is an inappropriate name. I will not have that in my adult learning room, and you can cross them out. So Alex has to come back in now and pick a better name. Goodness, Alex. <laughs> Angela from BC. Wow, thanks, Angela. I'm liking some of these names. <laughs> is there anyone else still trying to join? No, I think we're good. Okay, I'm going to start this game up then. All right. Is there a winner? Yes, All there right. always is a winner. Hey, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Which of the following is not a function of Kahoot? Creative jigsaw activities, gives participants a record of the game, download results in a spreadsheet, or uses a discussion tool. So on your devices, you just have shapes to click, which would correspond to the questions and answers that I have up here. In the end, it shows us how many people selected which answer. So which of the following is not a function of Kahoot? Gives participants a record of the game. Nope. <laughs> oh man, the tables have turned from instructor to student. <laughs> Talking during class. <laughs> so that quiz game always stays online. Students don't actually get a copy of it. They can play it over and over again on their own, but they don't get to keep it. All right, DJ. So the points are based on how fast someone answered and was it correct. And you can turn that off. You don't have to have points if you don't want to. Ooh. I put points, yeah, I put points on because at the behest of some of my coworkers. All right, which of these are benefits of Kahoot? Time limits prevent students from cheating. It is an outlet for students to collaborate and comment. Formative assessment for instructors and students. Or collected data for analyzing question effectiveness. Oh, we didn't talk about that because I was crunching time, but that, in fact, is something you can do with Kahoot just here. Oh, right. Formative assessment for instructor and student. There's three correct answers here, you'll notice, so you don't have to have just one. That's a handy thing to do, too. Oh, Santa! Santa's with us. Good job, Santa. 
All right, last question. Pick a statement that is not true. Quiz results are published online with usernames. Your Kahoot can be made public or private. You can have an unlimited amount of players at once, or it is possible to form Kahoot teams during a quiz. Woohoo! All right. Such good students. All right, so in the end, oh, compares. Oh, Santa's on top. Sorry, Diane. Top five, though. <laughs> in the top five. Right. So this so is who the, made those questions? You did? I made those questions. In yes. advance. Okay. Yes, I did. So that's, an, yeah, you can make your quizzes in advance and then you can put them up on e-class or you can present them if you have face-to-face -face sessions. So this is the part that's going to be of great use to you at the very end. You'll notice that on your devices you get to rate the Kahoot. Did you learn something? Did you like it? Would you recommend it? How do you feel? Some people could put a sad face. So from here, as the instructor, you get to save the results of the quiz. So why I suggested that your students put in their student ID number is because you can now download, let's do direct download. You can download the results of the quiz and see which questions were harder, which were easier, how did your students perform specifically. And again, it doesn't have to be for marks, but you can use it to get an idea of who, how everybody is doing in your class. Let's open this. I'll show you what the spreadsheet looks like. It's so neat. Spreadsheets are great. I suppose it would also give you an idea of which were bad questions. Exactly. Like if everybody yes. was getting it wrong, that or just about everybody, you know, probably a bad question. Yeah. Or it might be something you might want to reteach. Exactly. It's a good question, but they're not all getting it wrong. So that comment was, you can use it to see, are those questions good, or are they bad, or do I have to reteach this, or was that way too easy, everybody gets it. So this is what your spreadsheet would look like. It could go straight to your Google Drive, so you can keep uh, copies of this forever and never to go back and look at. I can see the final scores of everybody, how many points did they get, Santa's the best. Question summary, okay, how did those questions perform? And you can go individually to see how each question was with each person. All right. So, oh, no, you're not supposed to see all of those. You have to go? That's okay. Thanks for coming. Let's go back from the right side. Okay, so. At the beginning, I said our goals were to learn what Kahoot is and how does it work and how is it useful to you. So Kahoot is engagement for all ages, K to 12, up to the age of 90 or beyond. So it looks juvenile, but play is actually some, a really good engagement tool to get people learning and it really activates more of that brain. So it's good for everybody. You can customize content or use another user's quiz. So we were crunched for time, but you can actually go search other people's content. You can pick a quiz, and if it almost fits your purposes, but you want to make some tweaking, you can duplicate that quiz. It goes into your library, and you can make whatever changes you want. It will attribute the original creator of the quiz. So that's something else you don't have to worry about. Yes, Diane. So if somebody wanted to, uh, if somebody wanted to use this in their classroom, and it was a course they taught regularly. Um, they could then set up a whole series of quizzes that might start a conversation or a whole series of quizzes that might test a lecture they've just given or something that the student had to do. But all of those things would be kept. So the next term they would just pull quiz number six from the, from the list and, and use it in the sixth module or something. Exactly. So Diane was commenting that you could use these quizzes and just pull them again and again if you're teaching the same course and want to keep the same content. It's easy, you just go back, link to it, boom, start it up, you're good to go. Very handy little database for yourself. Finally, the most important thing is Kahoot is great for formative assessment. It really opens those doors for you to get information on how instruction is going for you and your students. So that is the presentation. Are there any questions or comments that anyone would like to share? Yes. I'm wondering if I was to do this, it seems like I must have a computer and be running the questions on the screen because just now during the exercise, mm -hmm. uh, I only had the symbols to pick from. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to do this without, you know, maybe you wanted them to do it at night? 
and you don't want to be involved in showing the questions on the screen. There is a way to do that, in fact. Let's see if I can kind of show you an example. So the question or the comment was, well, it looks like you'd have to have the screen going and then everybody on their devices at the same time. What if I wanted to, them to do it at night as say homework? So uh, let's go find a Kahoot. Uh, I want to do something on movies. Okay, so for your Kahoot, when you link it to your students, they would have this kind of a screen and they would have that little purple play button. They can play it by themselves. They don't actually need to be in a room with other people. Nobody else has to be hosting it. They can do it just by themselves. You can also preview things. Let's see if the pre oh, that didn't display very well. Preview function lets you kind of play it by yourself here. It gives you a mock phone, and then you, it also lets you be the host at the same time. So. One is the loneliest number, but it works just fine on Kahoot. Thank you for asking that. Any, yes, Brian? No, just another thing you could do is um, build a quiz in your class if you want students to go there and, and do that. But it's a nice option, too. Mm -hmm. Yes, Alex? Got a, a question online. Can you quickly repeat how to enter an instructor mode to create a quiz? Oh, yes. So to go um, create a quiz as your an instructor, Ooh, man, I have a lot of tabs open. You would go to kahoot.com and you could log in. From there, there's a little purple button up at the top that says New K or New Kahoot. It would bring you to a page where you have four options to create a quiz, a jumble, a discussion, or a survey. Again, the quiz is that multiple choice, which one is the right answer. Jumble was take these things and put them in order. Discussion was there might be a right answer, but let's talk about why other people chose other things. And survey is simply just an opinion piece. So when you click on that, that will take you to whether you're a teacher or not and whether you want to get started? Yes. Did that answer the question? Let's see if they answer. How fast were they at typing? Yes. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right. Thanks for sticking with me to the end, everybody. I hope that's of use to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.